So how did you want to be in the entertainment business? Is that something that you always dreamed of? Um, I um, started out wanting to be, to be a musician. Mm-hmm. And long story short, ended up in school um, for broadcast engineering and ended up in as an adult student in, in um, Boston at UT. And I um, got into the film television program. And I just got really interested in kids' theater. Um, so I, um, and, yeah, everybody else wanted to make black and white art films, and I wanted to do kids. So uh, I, I, when I finally did get out, um, I decided to come back to New York, and um, I, I wrote a letter to Joan Gans Cooney you know, that uh, said to me, sort of tell them, you know, never heard anything. Um, and amazingly, there was an ad in the New York Times for uh, an assistant. Nickelodeon, and I went in, and I interviewed, and I got the job. <laughs> That's how I got there. Yeah, it's funny because New York City was really the hub where entertainment, because one, you had Sesame Street there, and Nickelodeon was basically headquartered there, so it was kind of like the best of both worlds, basically, what you had. Well, yes and no. I mean, honestly, Nick was, at that point, had just started, had just done the first season of Double Bear, you know, just a, just a little bit of Double Bear, and he was doing that for I remember yeah, Finders Keepers because I remember. It was, it was really, uh, yeah, it was cool. I mean, it was a, it was a great place to be at the time. Looking back on it now, yeah, it was really, really wild. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And at that point, um, Nickelodeon, they were kind of in a nut almost because they were had to find a hit show, but with executives like Jerry Laybourne and, like, and Jeffrey Darby, like you mentioned, they were really creative people who were had a viewpoint of what Nickelodeon, the Kids Network, and Double Dare was really kind of took them off when you got there. Is that correct? Yeah. Yep. All right. Yeah, I'm sure people will, will be happy to tell you all about the, we had a Kids Bill of Rights, you know, um, you know, it was always Kids First. You know, we had a, we just had a completely different outlook, you know, mm-hmm. of like someone like Disney. Oh, okay. Yeah, and we were always trying to upset everything, do anything, you know, uh, in a crazy way, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and like you mentioned, Finders Keeper, it had a writer's strike in the second season, so is that why the show didn't move forward at all anymore? I don't really know why, um, to be honest with you. I, I, uh, I don't know. <laughs> to be perfectly honest with you. I mean, we had all these other shows, you know, we always ended up going. Um, there might, I, I wouldn't have probably been privy to that information. Maybe they just want to come up with new things. I don't know. Maybe the ratings weren't that I don't know. Right. We did do a pilot in LA with, um, some people in, in, uh, from, from the UK, which turned out to be really cool because years later when I went to UK, I worked with the same people to do, um, a show called Get the Picture over in, in, uh, in London. So that was kind of cool for me, but. I don't know what it is. I mean, I think it was pretty successful, but I, you know. Mm-hmm. All right, I uh, understand. There was also, that was in between, that was like in between, you know, Nick Studios wasn't up, wasn't around yet, you know? No, so, no, it wasn't. Yeah. All right, so uh, speaking of Nick Studios, when you first heard the idea, was it something that, that was in the long running for everybody at Nick? Was it something that was a long discussion that they wanted to create a studio centered for the network? Um, I mean, I couldn't begin to tell you when I first heard about it. Um, it was obviously something they had planned to do. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, I'm sure I knew all about it, you know, <laughs> a long time ago. 
And you also have to remember that a lot of us, like, I had gone down to Philadelphia to work on a show, you know, so you were, like, we were usually working like Mad Men, you know? Right, um, right. But, yeah, I mean, they obviously consciously decided to do this as, you know, an attraction, an anchor, you know, which was a great idea. Yes, absolutely. I do have to tell you that I was extremely excited um, because at the time that we finally, when they finally shut me down, um, we were doing Total Panic in a studio in New York and Chelsea. Mm-hmm. And I, I'll never forget this. We had something with this reindeer. And I was like, oh, you won't be able to get the reindeer in, you know, kind of thing. <laughs> and, you know, you you had to go to studios and places. And, you know, they, you also have to remember that um, at that time, um, you know, California, LA, that was like, you know, unions and guilds and things like that, you know? Right. And they had, Florida is a work, work state, you know, that was a whole, it was going to be the third coast, you know, kind of a little bit like Austin and also maybe a little bit like, um, you know, North Carolina. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. I mean, they play time, I mean, you know. Yes, yes, and uh, basically Orlando and Florida back then, it was kind of gearing up to become a major film industry where it's basically known as Hollywood East at that point. So that was that a good time and after? Yeah, I think that was the idea, yeah. Yeah, but it Yeah, d- they were gonna, well, they had MGM Studios over at Disney and, you know, Universal. Yeah. Um, obviously, theme parks, or, you know, huge there, but yeah, it's gonna be a real production, yeah. Mm-hmm, yeah, and by that point, Total Panic and Double Dare, they were both being stationed in Philly and New York, and then they decided to move to... Orlando to shoot down there. Um, what was your first impression of the Nick Studios when you got there? Um, oh, it was cool. You know, I mean, it was all like state of the art. Mm-hmm. This time, you know, B two that was like a big deal. Digital tape, you know. It was, um, yeah, I mean, it was cool. It was also um, very exciting to be at you know a film studio, you know, which is what Universal was. Mm-hmm. You know, there was a really cool line. For people like me between, you know, the working studio and the theme park, you know? Right, right. So, that was, that was cool. Yeah, I mean, yeah, and I mean, you know, it was like, we were going to have, like, our own studios. We could do whatever we wanted. It was really exciting. Mm-hmm. It was really exciting. You yeah. because when do you get to do that, you know? And, and we had, like, a, you know, really great, you know, tight-knit group of creative people, you know? Oh. And, um, you know, we constantly making stuff up, so, and the coolest thing of all was, um, once, once we got, you know, once we got up and running, and everything opened, you know, we had kids everywhere, mm-hmm. which was great, because, uh, you know, uh, most of the time, if you're off shooting something somewhere, you know, maybe you have kids in the audience, you know, you don't see kids every day, you know, so that was, like, really cool, that, yes. you know, I could be doing something, and I could just do something, and say, what do you think of this, you know, that yeah. was great. Yes, absolutely. I mean, the kids, they were basically the ones in charge of the network because back then, Nick Studios, its tagline was the world's first headquarters for kids, and that's what it was made out to be. So I could definitely understand that kids were everywhere and excited that Nickelodeon had a home almost, you know? Yeah. Mm hmm. Yeah. yeah. And what was a typical day like being there at the studio? Because I wanted to know how many shows you guys taped a day for Double Dare or whatnot. Well, you know, I mean, it varied on the, by the shows, and I didn't actually do a lot of double dares. I did, um, I did some specials, um, and uh, was probably after we'd been there a couple of years, probably. Um, and I think it was we did something with the NBA. I was in this doing stuff with the NBA. Um, I can't remember if Mark would remember this, and um, Mark was Mark was really excited because we got a new wardrobe. <laughs> but um, so I, you know, I didn't do uh, as didn't do a lot of double dare. So um, Angie Barton got did, did tons of double dare. But I did. I did variety shows. Um, I did do a lot of game shows. Um, I also worked with people. You know, doing pilots and ideas like that. Um, I mean, what happened was, you you know, game shows were very inexpensive, relatively inexpensive, and you know, there was just kind of almost this formula. Um, and if you, you know, you'd be under pressure to do, you know. If you were in the run, you know, you'd be doing four a day. It was crazy. So, mm-hmm. You know, you didn't do that every day for six months, but you might be, you know, so you would go through cycles where you'd be gearing up a show, be gearing up to go into, into production, and then it would just be kind of a blur. 
Um, the other thing was because it was an attraction, they always wanted stuff going on, on the weekend, which was kind of a drag at first because you had to work. <laughs> you were working on the weekend. Mm-hmm. You know. Yeah, I know. Um, you know, it was it was like very fast, very fast paced. Um, but like you said, it was you know it was it was exciting. It was fun. I mean, you just you just you know went and did it. And there were um, like I said, a lot of it was a great group of people. Some great um, designer. You talked to Byron, for example. You know, a guy I still have to work with. Um, you know, and there was there was also sometimes a sense of like, hey, you know, a total show kind of thing. We we just do that sometimes, but. Um, yeah, so there was definitely, um, you know, you had you had to do things very efficiently, um, and you know we got really good at, at doing that. But this is depending on the kind of show we're doing, um, and I would say probably for me um, over time, it geared up to to Dutch, which technically was not actually at Nick Studios; <laughs> it was uh, in the sound stages. Mm, yeah, door, sound was, stage twenty one. Uh, the studios when I first got there was, you know, humongous. Um, and by the time I left, they were tiny. <laughs> um, but, but I was doing, you know, I got into doing many more physicals. Once we got into doing guts, you know, the sound stages weren't even big enough for us at that point. So, um, but, um, yeah, I mean, it was, uh, yeah, we just, I mean, I could tell you some funny anecdotes and things like that. I remember, um, without being, like, negative particularly, but I do remember um, pretty early on, um, this, you know, they'd have the studio meetings and, like, people come down from New York, you know, and they were like, nobody can wear shorts, you know, every freak out. Wow. Because <laughs> we're going to wear, wear shorts. And, yeah, Jerry's like, okay, let me let me be clear, you know, yeah, of course you can wear shorts, you know, you can have, you know, you have to be, you know, you can't wear short, short, shorts. Um, and also there was, like, you know, discouraged to be, because local, some local people in Orlando might have come from over at Disney, you know. Right. And they, like, not to wear their Disney watch. <laughs> I mean, there's definitely a healthy uh, rivalry between us and Disney. Mm-hmm. You know, the upstarts, you know. Um, and, uh, uh, yeah, definitely a totally different culture. Um, yeah. So, yeah, you know, it was just, it was kind of crazy and always busy and, um yeah, a healthy competition because um, Disney and Universal was competing back then, and was certainly with Nickelodeon on Universal side. It was, I can definitely understand why you could say, yeah, we were kind of competing with Disney. Disney and Nickelodeon are still competing. You know, that's what they. Yeah. They oh, definitely. Natural. But I did mention when you said, um, "Hi, honey, I'm home." You worked on that too, right? Yeah. I, well, "Hi, honey, I'm home" was very unusual. Um, number one, it was the first original Nick at Night show. Mm-hmm. It wasn't kids. Um, number two, it aired, I believe, on ABC. Yeah. And then it at night. And the people who did it, Rick Mitz, Penny, and Barry, um, you know, Rick, Rick, um, you know, he was a writer for Norman Lear, you know? I mean, these are, like, real L.A., real people. <laughs> and, um, you know, so they came to Florida, and, um, like I said, I was fortunate. I struck a deal, so I would get to work on it. And actually, when I moved to L.A., I actually rented a guest house for Rick out there, um, which was cool. And that, so that was, like, that was like for us, that was a whole different world. And, um, like, they had, like, shrimp on their craft services table. You know what I mean? It was just, like, a different world. They were, like, real. They were, you know, DGA, WGA. Um, that, was, that was cool. They had, a, you know, a great rap party. So that, that was a really good thing to work on because it was so different than, you know, all the other, you know, sort of scrappier stuff we were doing. But, you know, there was, there were, there were lots of things I wish I could have worked on, like, like, course, it was very, uh, sort of groundbreaking. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, Welcome Freshman, I think it was even before that, that was about Mittens Off. Oh, yeah. You know, so they were, they were doing scripted narratives, um, and then, but we always had some kind of games or varieties, and that's what I always end up working on, you know, um. For good or for bad, that's just kind of how it worked out. So I like I loved working on Honey Honey. So more people kind of came on staff. A number of people who had come down originally from New York, you know, really joined joined the group. Um, and um, I'm just trying to think of some people I worked with. All the James Bethea, he was great. He was my partner. Mm-hmm. You know, Charmin, Ray, Krim. Um, you know, all those like people that, and you know, so we did have. We still had a really great time. Now, you know, if you look back on it, you know what I mean? Right, so we right. Really, 
so hard. Right. Um, and um, I do remember, the, like, I think it was maybe our first Christmas. I couldn't even tell you what month I moved down there. But I remember my um, boss at the time was, was Andy Bamberger. And mm. I knew Andy from New York. Um, and he's like, God, oh, you know, we got to have something over the holidays because it's a theme park. So I was always out under the canopy, like, making up games and testing games. So I came up with Game Lot along with Greg Lee. Oh, my God. Um, and, um, and then I think uh, we got Bob Brandenburg. I love Bob. Bob got involved in it. And so we just, like, you know, made it really with me and Greg. And we made this whole thing up, and um, we had it do it in stage. And it was like Christmas, you know. It was like, <laughs> anyway, so we did it, and it was actually really successful. And um, I don't know, a few months later, you know, I'm walking somewhere, and I see this big sign, you know, like Game Lab. I'm like, what's this? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. And like, and st- I had no idea, you know, and I was like, that we don't even, the, the name isn't copyrighted, you know what I mean? We just made it up, um, uh, you know, and it was like, but that's maybe kind of an indication of the way things work sometimes, you know, like, you had no idea, and then you would see something, you were like, well, when did that happen? And, you know, I would have liked to be involved, and then, of course, I guess it became a big thing at, you know, all the theme parks, but, um, but that was, yeah, that was uh, me and Greg. Um, like just having to come up with something like in an hour, you know. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, I spoke to Bob about Game Lab. He. I, I don't know about all these VIPs coming because it was like you know the, the big opening. You know, I think Spielberg came. Um, yeah, you know what I mean. It was like all these big, you know, big people were coming, so they had to have something going. But um, um, actually, and and I I thought you know we could actually do something with it, but we could actually do something where we're doing these kind of workshops with kids and actually uh, help us develop things. Mm-hmm. I would have loved to do That didn't happen. But that would have been... See, that, we should have been doing things like that, I think. But, um, you know, it just got crazier and crazier. Um, but, it, but, it, but it was great because you could get kids always to test things with you and stuff. That really was the best thing in many ways. And it was really funny because you'd see these kids and they would go, it's like 2 o'clock, you know, why where's double there, you know? <laughs> They would see something on TV and they would think that's when we were making it every day. Mm-hmm. That's a funny thing. I remember that. And, um, you know, they didn't understand the concept that <laughs> you'd make a whole bunch. <laughs> and they would, you know, throw on a schedule. Um, I'm trying to remember if we didn't even want... Well, the live... I think they had a... Um, I remember something with the, uh, the time capsule. You probably heard about that. Yeah, that. I know the time capsule burial. Yeah, 1992. I think there was some big thing about that because I remember having to do something like that. Yeah. I did have an opening. And then I, and then I did a, um, when I was in England, so that would have been fall of 93, um, I was coming back to London just to go to the rap party <laughs> get the picture, and I, I, I get to the studio and they're like, oh no, Woody, you have to, and they used to call me Woody. Um, uh, we're doing a live, um, live uh, transatlantic slimy launch for Nikki K, so I had to do that. The fish on the on the other end of Florida, and uh, I remember thinking that was crazy. Wow. That's how things used to, <laughs> yeah, and and then this has nothing to do with the studios, but um, well, it kind of does in a little way. But you know, there were a couple of recipes for swine, depending on what your plan was to do with them. And I had just been in in Turkey working with these these, these people, and so I they were you know swine was in my the forefront of my mind, and then we like we have to make swine, and we have like an hour, you know. And we're at this great studio, Wanzo Studio in London. And they were going to swine the presenter, or get, they call them get presenters over there. Oh, so get the picture that we had just wrapped up. And, and so in that case, she didn't jump it on somebody's head. I think it was the one with, the, with applesauce. They mm. don't have applesauce in the UK. It does not exist. They've never heard of it. <laughs> it something that, so we were in the, ki- the beautiful um, kitchen, like in the studio. We found these giant cans of pears. Mm. And they were mashing these things up. <laughs> like so we smashing them with our hands trying to make wine and we find the guy get chunked <laughs> oh my god it was anyway oh it really went home to I'm sure it must have looked different from the actual slime that was used at the studio with chop here now that you mentioned it <laughs> it's really we had, yeah, we had, but we couldn't get the applesauce so we had to you know in, we had to make something up really really fast so we did um, the other <laughs> Anyway, I, 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 you probably know this one already, but it popped, you know, just thinking about early studio days. 
And um, it was probably the first double that they were doing at the studio. And you hear about Mark Summers? Yeah, um, super, super sloppy double dare. Is that what you were talking about? It could have been, yeah, yeah. And the guard gate. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> he broke the guard gate thing. I'll never forget it. It was so hilarious. They weren't gonna let him in, so he just backed up and like you know, it was like one of the security things. <laughs> he just drove through anyway. Oh. Wow, that is so, that's so many funny stories. Yeah, and I mean, really, it was. Um, it was originally, as I said, because, uh, you know, I was always out there testing stuff, and Andy's like, can you just come up? I did, and then we pulled Bob into it. And then, like I said, it went off in its own, and I, you know, like I actually, I don't even know what happened. But, um, yeah, but it was, you know, I was like, we need to think of something, you know, right now. Mm-hmm. You know, for $5. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I also remember um, the other really strange thing was, you know, the control rooms, at least in the early part of the, my time down there, I, were, I was in the studios. Later on, I was more over, I was more outside the, in the sound stages and I'd be in trailers, you know? Mm-hmm. But, um, room, and, you know, you'd, you'd forget, and you'd look up, and there'd be, like, you know, 200 people standing behind you. They were on, like, this, this tour. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Mm-hmm. Like, really, it was really weird, you know? And you're just working, and... So that was, you know, I didn't like that at all. Um, I really did it because you might, you know, you would forget that people were behind you, you know? Right, You know right. what I mean? And that you're always, in the, you know, in the back row. Oh, so you do whatever you want, you know? And um, uh, so that was a little disconcerting. And I, and then, you know, you should feel sort of obligated because now you're going to ignore all these people, you know? So that was, I'm not good in public. I didn't like that. And also for a very, very brief moment in time, they decided to make the, um, the you know, the headset chatter. Uh, they decided wh- to block. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and pretty much anybody you talk to will tell you the people in kids' television have the worst language <laughs> in the world. <laughs> and, you know, the show. I mean, it's the softest line, you know what I mean? Right, right. it's not... They, were, they broadcast it for, like, one day, I think it was, and then it went, oh, my God, and you're like, you cannot... You cannot do that. Um, so that was, uh, was, put up a fake feed or something. You can't have live, you know, because you just totally forget that anybody is hearing it beyond, you know, the camera guys or something. So that was a quick, that, that didn't last <laughs> Yeah, and um, it, it must have been bothersome with all the equipment in your ear. Well, you're hearing one thing, the other in your ear. So it must have been very annoying. So I can understand. Well, no, it's not annoying. It's just that you're not saying things for the general public to hear. Oh, okay. I get it. I get and, it. And the curse. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the director, you know, it's the heat of the, you know what I mean? It's, it's very, especially if we do a lot of live action, you know, live to tape. So we would do minimal, something like Double Dare, you know, we would do live to tape. So you would be running multiple cameras, you know, you would be rolling in music, you know, you'd be trying to do as much of it live as you could. And that's, you know, just takes on a whole other, you know, dimension. And you latch and you're thinking about what you're saying. Mm-hmm. You know, the director. So that was the problem. They were, wanted to broadcast that to everyone. And so they, they got rid of that. So. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Amazing. And I have to ask you because I looked your, up your resume and you worked on The Big Help. And how did that come about? Um, well, the, my understanding, now this is also something else. Like being down in Florida, um, it was a little hard because you were not in New York and so you, you were really kind of out of touch with a lot of what was going on at Nick, you mm-hmm. know? Um, but I was working with um, Albie Hecht, who... Well, I don't even think he, he later joined Nickelodeon, you know, as a big, you know, the big guy. But at the time, he was an outsider, I believe. Anyway, originally, if you go back to history of Nickelodeon, the whole rebranding, you know, with the orange flat and stuff, that mm-hmm. was all this, this, these two guys, Fred Allen. Fred Seibert and Alan Goodman. You've probably heard of them, right? Yeah, I have. I have. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Fred Allen's a uh, worldwide federal. Right? He's a huge uh, animation guy, and he went on to... Anyway, Fred Allen, they were in New York, and actually Albie worked with them early on. Um, and um, Alan Goodman, uh, I know, you know, there was, actually they were, you know, were looking to do things, um, you know, sort of corporate responsibility and with kids and everything like that. 
And I'm not sure where the initial spark came from, but I think that Alan Goodman was largely behind the whole concept of the big help and the, you know, share care, give, the big help, stand, whatever it was. And right. And the book and everything. Great guy. Um, um, he wasn't, he actually did uh, one season of Shelby. He did Shelby. Shelby Woo. Woo. Yeah, he did all the seasons of that. Mm-hmm. That's true. Yeah, he, he's a super nice guy, by the way. Um, so he could inevitably give you uh, a very good history of the big help. Um, but for me, um, I was um, living in L.A., but I was doing Guts in Florida. And I remember this because I wanted to work on it, but I um, couldn't get back to L.A. until September because of Guts. So I came back to L.A., and the first, the very first, they decided to do the big help with them, mm-hmm. which is absolutely so we did that on the back lot at Universal, and I did a block party for 5,000 people. <laughs> and um, it was the craziest thing I ever did in my life, and it was absolutely thrilling and great. And I know there were a lot of segments that were done down in Florida. Um, I didn't do any of that. I, my whole involvement was in the on LA. Okay. Um, uh, and also, Nick Toons had just started up, you know, while we were in Florida. So, like, Red and Stimpy... And, you know, all that stuff. And that was on L.A. So the two people were involved. So, um, yeah, I, so, you know, that's the big help started that year. I actually worked on, oh, at least the first three, three of them. The, the biggest one was the first year. Um, and the block party was so cool. The next year, they decided to do the whole thing out. And this was in the, the New York backlight at Universal in, in, um, in um, Hollywood. Um, and it was cool. I don't know if you were told you of it. You ever saw that? That was um, kids called in to play time. Oh yeah, I do remember that. Yes, I do. We were blown away because we, you know, we got like millions of that. We just couldn't believe it. The response was so great, and we worked with a lot of partner organizations, uh, Second Harvest, Big Brothers, you know, all these different groups. Mm-hmm. Um, so that was a, that was a that was a really really great experience, but it, it was not related to Florida and Exodus for me in any way. It was all right, but. I know they did a lot of stuff down there. Now, I'll be, like, guaranteed to produce all the big help, not big help stuff. Um, mm-hmm. So that was, um, yeah, that was, that's quite legendary, that first <laughs> one particularly. Right. And, and, and very cool, all these people out from New York to have help who work, because I was, I was, I was sure that by then, you know, they actually didn't pay me to do it, but, um, <laughs> I was always asking when I volunteer, I said, no, <laughs> they weren't pay me. Um, yeah, so that was that was that was great. That was really cool. Yeah, that it was. was. That, that and then the next thing would be Global Guts, which is the craziest, absolutely craziest. Uh, we were out of our minds, but we did it. Yeah, I was we just, just I was just about to ask you that. Like, how was Guts and working on that show? That was like one of my favorite shows as a kid because that show was just extravagant and mind blowing things happening. Like, but it was really a good show. Thank you. We thought, I, thought, I think so. Um, we, um, there was a guy, well, I also used to do, I did do some uh, pilots or projects that went completely into oblivion, like there was something called Humongous. There was, uh, what was that other one? There was another one I built a model, a really cool model, I'm trying to remember. But, but uh, somebody, I do I can remember, somebody had pitched something, I didn't even know who it was, and they didn't do it or whatever, but there was this one thing that they liked, and they had something to do with bungee basketball, and Herb Scannell, who was the head of um, programming at the time, he loved NBA. He still does, as did Albie. So they were bringing Albie Hatt in, who was Chauncey Street Productions at the time. He was not Nick. And so I worked with Albie on, 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 on Gus Albie and, uh, and Magda, Magda Leola, who was just still with Nickelodeon, and Gus Fisher was involved, and Byron Taylor was involved, and... Um, you know, I remember when I did do some double dares, um, you know, we're setting everything up and whatever and, you know, prepping the kid and talking to the kid. And, and I must forget this kid. This kid says to me, he's like, what do I win? Mm-hmm. You know, and I'm like, what do you hear when you're on double dare? You know, like, isn't that the coolest thing ever? And he's like, well, what's the prize? You know, and I, I hate that. I still hate that. And so my big thing was, I don't want to do another game with, with prizes. I hate prizes. And we started, you know, talking about what we could do, and we, like, had the basketball thing. So we ended up taking it in a whole different direction and went into sports and went with the Olympic model and, you know, the rest. And my, 
they got medals, you know? Right. Um, I mean, technically, as I said, that show was shot at Universal, but it was a mixed studio show. Um, we never piloted it. We just made it up. And, again, another one of those out, completely out of our minds. Um, we had a crazy sweet fun team. Um, and we literally, like, just strung stuff up and started playing around with it. Um, and, just, you know, as, and also that was, um, uh, that show had to have a different production model. It just, just no way that you could ever do for it. You know, I just couldn't do it. And thanks to Albie, you know, he really sold that. Like, we need to do it right. We need it, you know, it's going to cost more. It's going to take longer, you know, that kind of thing. But I think it really paid off well. Um, I think if I look at the first season, it would look incredibly crude to me, you know. Um, but we built on it every season. And, um, you know, I'm really, really proud to say um, we had 50% percent go winners on that show. Um, you know, we weren't scientific about it, but we were always balancing, you know, things that boys might be better at, things that girls might be better at. You know, as long as we were matching kids, relatively well from a physical standpoint, which I selected every single kid that was ever on gut. You know, we, again, we had kids, it was great. It was just gender neutral, you know? Right. Think about it. <laughs> that is um, something. I mean, ever, ever, ever had one single kid cry or be a sport, so a sport, or, you know, I lost to a girl. Never happened. Never happened. Every, I swear to God, every, every those kids were just awesome. And it was always that, you know, um, healthy competition, good sportsmanship, you know. You could come from behind. But, you know, basically everybody won because they just wanted to play and be on it, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and so, so, you know, but by the time Global Guts came along, you know, we knew how to make it. And the, the staging was massive. It was absolutely massive. So we had a production plan where we would shoot basically three shows, but they all had the identical same content. So we developed a certain number of obstacles or events that we would rotate around, and we would shoot it completely out of sequence. You know, then we would, I would have a very complicated formula for how we would air them. So we figured out early on that there's something that's really great. Kids will want to watch it again and again. Right. You know, but, but so, you know, there would be enough of a mix, and we usually did, I want to say, we usually did 39, something like that. Um, so, you know, three was the max on that always. Um, and it was done like event number one three times, event number, you know, because the staging was just massive, um, really huge staging crew. And we got to Global Guts, and, you know, it was nuts. We were 12 countries, seven languages. We had 62 um, interpreters. <laughs> we had a global village. We took over a whole uh, hotel complex. We had an entire global village. We had kids flying in it. You know, it was like absolutely insane. Um, and we, I don't know how we did it, but we pulled it off. <laughs> right. But then, six years ago, you got to be on My Family's Got Guts, which was another variation of Guts, and at that point, the studio had closed, so what do you remember oh, best yeah, about working yeah. on that? What do you remember best about working on that, and was it like a different atmosphere to see that Nickelodeon was kind of not there anymore? Oh, it was, it was like weird. First time I went down there, mm -hmm. I hadn't been there since Global Guts. I never went to visit Orlando. Um, why would I, right? <laughs> um, so I had, when I left, you know, everything was still humming along. Um, you know, I was extremely weird. You know, really weird. Um, it's like this, you know, for a sort of ghost town feel. And I think they had like Blue Man Group or something in there. Yeah, they still do. That was my mind how how they how this didn't succeed. Honestly. Mm -hmm. You know, like how could Nick Studio not succeed? Come on. Right. Right. <laughs> That's a great idea. I mean, so I could give you a lot of my opinions. I'm going to try not to do that, but I mean, you know, yeah, um, this is very weird. But this is a, <laughs> po a popular, fun question. Were you ever slimed at one point? Did you get the green slime on you? No, ever? never. Never? So oh. I didn't think about it. And <laughs> I can you ask anybody who knows me, and they said she would have killed us. Yep, you're right. <laughs> no, I would not get not slimy. Oh, I remember we had to go. We had they started having these Nick golf tournaments. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's that's interesting. I don't play golf, right? And they and it's like you have to go. I'm like, I don't like golf. <laughs> 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 and uh, I, it's the only time I ever went on a golf course, and it was like 100 degrees, and I had just quit smoking again. Mm-hmm. So, um, I had a patch, and I was 
And I was, I was like, oh, no, they were going to they were gonna put me on with needles. I'm like, if I have needles, I'll be fine, because then they don't have to tell me the whole time. As it turned out, they, they didn't. They put me with these three people I didn't know at all. Right. Um, who wanted a show, you know what I mean? Or something like that, <laughs> that kind of thing. And I'm like, I figured out after like an hour, like we never got close. To, you know, everybody always stayed the same. Ah, oh, it was horrible. And they ended up running out to me in a special, like, Gaffer's tape to take my nicotine patch on because the woman I was stuck with was chain smoking. Mm-hmm. I have the nickel. Wow. But they had to that and everybody had to go. I'm just trying to think we had. They had some crazy, we had a crazy Christmas party. Oh, like yeah. Guys. Yeah, I always hear that from they, people. The parties were amazing. <laughs> they had really crazy ones in New York, so they never quite measured up to what, because we used to you know, as MTV, we have crazy parties in New York. I'm just trying to think of stuff like that. Um, and, you know, we all, we used to all hang out. You know, we had this group of, as I said, it was a really great group of people, and we'd hang out all the time. Mm-hmm. Because, you know, we all came somewhere else, and we basically just worked all the time. And, um, you know, we really, we had a great, we, I had a lot of fun. I really did. And it was the only way, because, you know, you were always working hard. Well, we did when we did Global Guts, in addition to everything else. Which was, you know, tryouts, producers, small around, you know, all this stuff we had to do. Um, they, they were like, they had a whole synergy with Paramount, right? Mm-hmm. So in the Paramount, we, for our, our American kids, we did a cross country Global Guts uh, tryout at Paramount Theme Park. <laughs> On top of everything else. And um, that was fun because you had a great team and our stunt, our stunt team was out on the road with us and, and those first three. Yeah, they're all those shows. They were all like our same, well, most of the same guys, you know. Um, and not just guys, girls, you know, people, people, I should say. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, and, and I'm really good friends with them, too. And we had, you know, we had a blast when you're out on the road. But I do remember getting word on to a, um, a roller coaster, and I never got another roller coaster in my life. I never will. <laughs> yeah, I was just about to ask you that because that was one of the advantages of working at Nickelodeon was at a theme park. So, what was your favorite ride or attraction at Universal Studios? Well, actually, you know, it wasn't open yet. I remember us going on Back to the Future before it was open. Yeah, because mm-hmm. they, they wanted people to test it, and um, it was pretty wild. And then, you know, we found out that the first the earlier run, you know, everybody was like basically throwing up. Because it kept having to dial it down, you know. But I remember, um, yeah, we would go on, you know, they invite us. I remember trying out the restaurants. They wanted to practice. <laughs> mm-hmm. we, we would go on the rides before. I liked the Hanna Barbera ride. That's when I liked the best, uh, that time in Florida. At uh, Universal, at least. I thought Hanna Barbera was really cool. And it was like that same kind of motion thing where you ride into a cartoon. Yeah, um, I remember that. Mm-hmm. Got to be, you know, just it just got to be like I couldn't stand it much longer. You know, it's just you know, hordes and hordes and hordes of tourists, and you know, it's just after a while, yeah, I got really tired of being parties. <laughs> oh, my favorite ride was Jaws back then. Well, you remember the Jaws uh, ride? Oh God, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I don't. But I do remember Earthquake mm-hmm. uh, because when I was right, there was a Northridge earthquake. And actually, that was interesting. The day, the morning, the North of the earthquake was like 4.30 in the morning. I was in L.A. at the very top of the Kennedy Rick with the sketch out. And I was, I was actually, that day, I was supposed to be starting, uh, must have been just three, maybe it was Global Guts. Uh, uh, in L.A., I was going to the, uh, the black, the Texaco building in, in uh, Universal City. And I, was, I remember that. And we put it off a week because of the, the earthquake. And I heard they did have to close the ride down, but... Hmm. Yeah, so I mean, you know, and then, and then the, well, now the park is like, you know, it's huge. It's so much different, I have to say, you know. Oh, definitely. I would last some other where they hadn't opened Harry Potter World, which I hear is really cool. Yes, so, I've been waiting to ride that, so I, just, I definitely have to get back there. Yeah, yeah. but I just have two yeah, more questions. I just have two more questions for you. Um, Nick Studios, it's been gone for nine years now. Would you like to see it reopen one day? Do you think it should come back? Um, I don't know. I don't have an answer to that. Mm. I mean, I think it was a great idea. I think it was really cool. I mean, it's like a great place to have kids. I would have to say that the kind of programming that Nick does now, I don't, you know, they don't make all their own. You know, we used to make our own stuff. 
I think the model is completely different now. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Um, I, you know, I mean, we really made shows there. That's why, that's what we did. And now, you know, now that it's just such a different... You know atmosphere. What I'm it's a different network. You know, live action. Yeah, you would you know, they're, they're, you know, they do, they do lots of animation. Um, you know, it, you wouldn't be doing all those game shows there. So I'm not sure, you know, if, you know, the idea was great. I thought it was great for kids. Yeah. Um, but I don't know why, but if they did that, what would it really be, you know, what would it really be? I mean, part of my our whole thing was it was a real thing. You know, we really were making the show. That was the point. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it became a lot more, you know, like anything, it becomes much more like game love, you know, it became like a attraction, you know? Right, right. Like you said, like, it was just popular with game shows back then in the early years, like, testing out games, I, it was really... Well, it, also, it, it, it became very limiting because then they, you, you know, they, the economics of it, you know, you had to, like, crank all these, they were really trying to do stuff for very little money, and, um... Yeah, because there's constant pressure to be more efficient and crank out more shows. And you'd be doing, I think at the picture, they were up to five a day, which is, you know, insane. Um, and then they also decided you had to fit shows in half a stage. And, and when we got there, those stages were gigantic. But by the time I left, those stages were tiny. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, so I think, you know, I don't know what their economic models were, or how they figured that all out, or if they ever did figure that all out. But that became very hard. And I do know that one of the projects they worked on, they didn't go to pilot, but we did a model, and we tested it in New York, and they loved it. But, you know, they said they'll have to fit in half a studio, you know, and it was like a big 3D board game. You know, like, forget it. Well, you can't do it. So, it, it, you know, mm. it, it got really hard to, to do stuff there, you know? Right, I right. Think. Right, right, yeah. Because I was speaking and to him. Like I said, Gus, Gus wasn't, wasn't ever at an experience. It just was never, wasn't even, you know. And I was thrilled. Honestly, I was thrilled. <laughs> yeah, it was done on a really big soundstage. Soundstage 21, that's where yeah, it was. They, yeah, it was done on 21. And then I think Global Dusty had two. And it's last one had two. And right. I would, have took, I would have taken three if I could have got them, to be honest. <laughs> but then Universal wasn't really doing much, you know. So they were, they were happy to have us... Uh, you know, take it over. So, and you know, and those, and even now that you know, there's sound stages in um, LA, in Vancouver, dwarfs, even North Carolina, dwarfs. You know, what's in Florida? Right. You know. Mm-hmm. And so. And my final question I have to ask you is, what do you think made Nick Studio so great and special from all of your your overall time there? What was so great about it? You think? Um. I mean, we were just trying to make really fun stuff for kids. <laughs> mm-hmm. I, mean, I think that, the, the, and this isn't really just not about, so much about the studios, it's about the whole, the whole, you know, Nickelodeon. You know, I drank the cool and I loved the idea of Nick. I loved it. And it was hard for someone like me to reconcile, as time went by, you know, that it's revenue, you know, and it was money, it was a business, you know. It was like, no, kids first, kids first. So that was fun. Um, initially, it was so great because, um, we, you know, we could really play. We could really, you know, just just have freedom to, to, to come up with crazy ideas and, and just do all kinds of crazy stuff. So that was really fun. That was, and and it was just a really the production group was just such a we such a great group of people. You know, mm-hmm. many many really good people. And for you know a lot of us we were like families kind of you know because we left you know came, we came on our own down to Florida and. Um, Right. I'm not very good at that, but <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was a really cool idea, and I think you know it started out really well, and it was really exciting. Um, I mean, most exciting to actually see kids reacting, to actually go out front and notice all these kids. You know, I, it just really, I think that's really important. It connected us to kids. Right, I agree with you. It yeah. was you do that if you're like in an animation studio. You know, you can't do that in a studio. You can't. This was like our audience is right outside, you know? Mm-hmm. And inside. <laughs> it's, yeah, I agree with you. It, the message mm-hmm. that, you know, kids first, and that's really what Nickelodeon back then was all about. Um, not so much. I don't think I could say the same for right now. But, yeah, it was definitely the kids win, you know. And I think the message was important for us and youngsters, and that's why 
I created a project just to yeah, see. Yeah, I mean, you, you know, there's people that really believed it, like me, you know, and not just me, and all, people in New York, too. There are lots of great people. I could name lists and lists of people who, you know, we all really believed in what we were doing. We had a larger mission, um, you know, and, um, you know, we, we came, for a while at least, you know, we sort of were, we're living the dream a little bit. Um, I mean, again, make no doubt about it. It was a lot. Of, it was hard work all the time, but you know, it was it was rewarding. So it was rewarding, and and it was also great. Um, like you know, to finally do guts to really do something that you, know, you really take a lot of pride in it. You know what I mean? There's shows I'd hope to never hear of again in my life. Believe me, you know. Um, but but then, yeah, we did some really excellent work. You know, I I think we did, and. Um, I'm actually working on a game idea right now. <laughs> oh, cool. Yeah, I have... I don't know. It seems like I'm getting lots of... Everybody's talking about Global Guts lately. Everyone's interested in, you know, international formats and things like that. So, I don't know. Like, all right, let me... Yeah. Yeah, get from... Get that back on. <laughs> yeah. From what I... I actually just got back... I just got back from the sandbox summit up at MIT, um, which was a really, really interesting um, experience. Um, yeah. Yeah. Media world of kids. So. Yeah, from what from what I could see, it didn't really feel like work. It was almost kind of like something that you love and something. It was fun work. That's what yeah, I feel but like. It was, but it was work. It, believe me, it was plenty of work. It mm -hmm. was, um, it, it, you know, it, it could be really fun, but it was also really hard. And it was just a huge amount of work. And it would be, you know, every weekend. You know what I mean? It was like really a grind. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. But, but you know, you try to keep your perspective, and then. You know, right. Probably a little. <laughs> mm -hmm. that, but, Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, you know, really appreciate you know that a lot of a lot of kids really you know grew up on it and had it you know took a lot of good stuff away from what we were doing. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, Chris, that about sums up everything. Actually, it was really good talking to you today. I must say. Yeah, you too. I'm sorry to be able to get back to you. I've been traveling and stuff. And, oh uh, no, it's no problem. But, uh, it's no yeah, problem. And if you, yeah, and if you, you know, need it. And so, all right. Well, I'm gonna let you go now. It was good talking to you. I must say, and I'll send you the you interview. Too, you know, good luck with your project, and you know, let me know when you've got it up and stuff. All right, cool. And I'll let you know when the interview yeah. is posted. All yeah, right. Cool. All right, have a nice day, Chris. All right, you too. All right, bye-bye. Bye-bye.